And now our gospel lesson today, which is from Luke chapter 13, verses 22 through 30. Jesus went through one town and village after another, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few be saved? He said to them, strive to enter through the narrow door, for many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able. When once the owner of the house has got up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, open to us. Then in reply, he will say to you, I do not know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. But he will say to you, I do not know where you come from. Go away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrown out. Then people will come from east and west, from north and south, and will eat in the kingdom of God. Indeed, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. This is the word of the Lord. So even prior to the brilliant lectures we've been hearing from Dr. Jennings the past several days, I have been noticing dirt lately. Maybe it's the spirit at work, or maybe it's due to the red mud tracked into my house on my daughter's boots. Or maybe it's because finally, 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 things are growing up out of this dirt. All of the dogwoods in bloom make me think of the spring that we returned to North Carolina to bury my father-in-law. I can still picture the white soil piled up in a small mound so that his ashes could be poured in and mingled with it. You see, dirt tells stories. It tells the stories of where we are from. It tells the stories of others who are from there too. And if we listen, that dirt will tell us how to live together there. You see, that red clay on my daughter's muck boots, it tells the story of Charlottesville. On a hill of that dirt where Staples and McDonald's now stand, once stood a thriving African-American neighborhood called Vinegar Hill. If you excavate just below the surface, you will find the rubble of foundations of homes, businesses, a community center, and a church. They were all torn down, bulldozed to make way for a new high school for white students and public housing and eventually the staples where I buy my office supplies. A recent story about the demolitions gives you a sense of what is buried in that dirt. It reads, on a Saturday morning in 1965, movers came to the Johnson home Kathy Johnson and her three-year-old sister listened at the breakfast table as their mother, Elsie, gave the movers instructions. The family was heartbroken. They didn't want to leave their modest two-story clapboard home, which often smelled of Elsie's famous dinner rolls. But the house was slated to be bulldozed by the city of Charlottesville as were 139 other black families' homes, 30 black-owned businesses, and a church in the Vinegar Hill neighborhood. This urban renewal project would be done in the name of progress. Where do we come from, my friends? And who is from there, too? The dirt beneath our feet tells a story. Last August, when neo-Nazis marched on the grounds of that hallowed university not far from what was once Vinegar Hill, and they chanted, blood and soil. Did they know where they came from? There is blood in that soil. 
and on those streets they claimed as their own. There's blood intermingled in the soil from slavery and the lost cause and Jim Crow, and now some of DeAndre Harris's and Heather Heyer's blood is mixed there too. Whose streets, they chanted, our streets. But the earth is the Lord's and all that is within it. The dirt beneath our feet tells stories and it begs the question, where do we go from here? And how do we live together? The dirt beneath our feet tells a story and if we are to bear good fruit on this farm, we have to get our hands dirty. We have to get down low and listen carefully to the story of Union Presbyterian Seminary. We need to know the stories of Robert Dabney, his biblical defense of slavery, his opposition to public schools. And we also need to know the stories of E.T. Thompson, his strong stand for desegregation and his work for civil rights, and so many more stories right here on the dirt beneath our feet. Where, my friends, are we from? We've got to till up the dirt and plunge our hands into it to really know where we are from. We have to know where we are from if we are ever going to plant seeds in rich, life-giving soil that bears fruit that lasts. The dirt beneath our feet tells a story of where we come from and begs the question, where does God want us to go from here? And how are we going to live there together? The National Memorial for Peace and Justice just opened in Montgomery, Alabama. A profile of Equal Justice Initiative founder Brian Stevenson in The New Yorker several years ago wrote this. After Stevenson's speech, the volunteers headed out in small teams to fill gallon-sized glass jugs with soil from the sites of the 363 lynchings that the Equal Justice Initiative had documented in Alabama. Many of the sites are approximate, and the soil project, which has been going on for about a year, is meant to be symbolic rather than scientific. Along the back wall of the room where Stevenson was speaking were about 100 jugs already filled with soil. The colors of the soil samples varied from nearly black in the Black Belt communities across the middle of the state to the tan, sandy soil from the Gulf Coast around Mobile. The names of the victims and the dates of their deaths, which ranged from 1877 to 1950, are marked on the jugs. Eventually, there will be over 4,000 jars filled with soil. Dirt tells the story of where we've come from. And it begs the question, where do we go from here if we want to abide with Jesus? And how do we join together in that place? It is long past time we dug in the dirt, excavated it, studied it, learned from it, listened to it. The soil upon which we stand reveals where we come from and when we dig in it, till it up, get on our knees and plunge our hands beneath it, the Holy Spirit will blow up a dust storm and it will transform the landscape. It will uncover where God wants us to go from here and how we are going to live there together. I once served a small church in the Waxhaws of the Carolinas. It's that place where the boundary line between North and South Carolina kept changing. And just down the road from where I preached Sunday after Sunday, there was another more famous Presbyterian church and their claim to fame is buried in their cemetery, and it is the parents of Andrew Jackson. 
The local museum boasts without even an ounce of irony. Beginning with our Native American roots, the displays in the museum's permanent exhibition room trace the history of our region from the time when the Waxhaw Indians hunted and camped along the creek banks through the mid-1700s, when several Scots-Irish families settled in this place they called the Garden of the Waxhaws, through the American Revolution, Civil War, and into the early 1900s, our museum proudly serves as a memorial to President Andrew Jackson, our nation's seventh president. Do they know where they come from? <laughs> Do they have any idea who is from there too? Have they looked beneath the surface, gotten on their knees and done a little digging in the dirt? Because the dirt beneath our feet, it tells stories of where we come from. And it begs the question, where do we go from here? And how are we going to live there together? The Presbyterian Outlook, as many of you know, periodically sends emails to our constituency. I know you click on them with urgency. <laughs> Many of you have probably read the following. The Presbyterian Outlook from time to time will send an email on behalf of organizations that may be of interest to our readers. These paid advertisements help fund the ministry of the Outlook. Well, recently we sent out one from Chalice Press promoting a book titled Anxious to Talk About It, Helping White Christians Talk Faithfully About Racism. And we got some responses, my friends. <laughs> Here's a sample. There's no racism with my acquaintances. It's made up nonsense. Enough is enough of this nonsense. Get on with the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, John 3, 16. And then we got this. How about talking about following Christ and denouncing sin? I guess if I don't feel white guilt, I'm racist. Look in the mirror, Pharisees. And I can't help but wonder, where do these Presbyterians come from? <laughs> do they not know the stories? The weeping and the gnashing of teeth? The shouting coming from beneath their feet? The dirt tells stories of where we come from and begs the question, where do we go from here? Where do we need to go if we want to abide with Jesus? And how will God join us together there? So I ask you, where do you come from? Who else is from there too? How does God want you to live together there? Look at the dirt beneath your feet, at your church, under your homes, in your neighborhoods. Get on your knees. Dig up some dirt. Put it in a jar, carry it around, wear it like phylacteries, and remember where you come from. Listen to the blood in the soil, the cries and the laughter, the lamentation and the praise buried just below the surface and let those stories reveal where God wants you to go from here. Let those stories lead you to where Jesus abides right now. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are the clay and God is the potter. Remember that God has created and formed you, redeemed and saved you. Look in the mirror 
and then get on your knees and dig in the dirt, till it up. Scatter gospel seeds. Add the fertilizer of grace and mercy and love and justice. Abide so close to the vine that you will bear good fruit that lasts. And then before we even get to that narrow door, Jesus will knock and we will hear his voice. And he will gather us from the north and the south and the east and the west. He will gather us from all the ends of the earth. And we will eat and drink together. Not only in the kingdom of heaven, but right here on the dirt beneath our feet. Amen.